there's cat bites, there's dead balls, there's massive events, there's relationship, morally questionable relationships going on. It's, it's pretty much just a straight continuation from where we ended with Monet um, in the finale of season or yeah, in season one, season two. Um, yeah, you see her start to, you know, enact her plan. Her rivalry with Julian begins um, and she starts to take the steps to take her down. Um, yeah, so you really start to see the gears working and and she starts planning sabotages and things to do. And Zion, for you? Um, yeah, it, it is definitely a direct continuation, like moments after the the season one finale um i think that luna is just you know still very committed to julian um and seeing her become this powerhouse that she you know envisions herself to be um so she you know she's you know kind of blindsided by moni's decision to kind of break away from the group but then you get to see her dynamics with the two because as you can tell she has um really close relationship with the two so it's kind of difficult for her to be in the middle um and you get to see her navigate that whitney do you want to sum up in a couple sentences what we can expect from season two yeah i think you can expect to go back to the original gossip girl storytelling i mean there's cat bites there's dead balls there's massive events there's relationship morally questionable relationships going on um yeah, there's just like back and forth on a lot of comments and stuff like that. And there's huge performances and bodies are buried and everybody's going to find out where they are. So yeah, I, 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 I'm I just like reeling, I'm, I'm regurgitating everything that Josh has spewed into my brain, but that's exactly what's going on this season. And we come off the back, we're in our, our throuple now. And yeah, I guess we're just going to follow all the trials and tribulations. I mean, it's hard enough to even fathom for me, for any humans to kind of be in a three-way relationship, never mind mid-teens. Uh, so yeah, I guess it just follows that and it's a lot of grown pains and a lot of barrett walls come down and it's kind of, it's a very like vulnerable space to be in for, for anyone, I think, especially for Max, who's so used to being in control and dictating the narrative. Um, and yeah, just the ups and downs of that. And I mean, I can't give you too much or you're going to get me fired. I also love that there's so many queer storylines on this show. Um, and they're different than, you know, your conventional shows, even conventional queer shows. Can you tell me a little bit about that and why it's so important? Um, yeah, it's it's definitely a queer show. I mean, I wouldn't even like to call it a queer show. I just like to call it a very modern take on society. Um, because I don't really like to call it a diverse show either. It's just representative of of you know what we're going through as people and who we are as people. Um, but I think that what's so wonderful about the show is that um our characters do not need to like constantly say that they're queer to you know be represented you can actually get to see them live their lives without any qualms really um in their queerness um well not any qualms obviously there's 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 qualms with any sort of queerdom or other otherness but um it's just really nice to see um characters that are fully developed outside of that and that are full dimensional people um yeah yeah, it's um it's incredibly rewarding, you know, as as a as a queer person myself. Um it's 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 yeah, it's fulfilling um to to be part of the representation that I, you know, I and other people my age, you know, when the original was out, well, you know, needed and needed to see. Um but yeah, also like what Zion said, I think the most amazing part of it, like Monet's never said she's gay. She doesn't need to. She just is. And everyone knows it, you know, um, in season two, um, you know, there's, you can see Monet start to, um, have some, you know, instances with her sexuality specifically, you know, at the debutante ball and, you know, with her parents. Um, and that's the first time that she really talks about it and, um, it's explored and it's done in a very, very amazing way. So I'm excited for people to see.
And um, Eli, you were on the PLL reboot in addition to the Gossip Girl reboot. Can you kind of compare the two for me? <laughs> PLL reboot. Oh, <laughs> it's it's so strange to me because those two shows were my younger sister's favorite shows growing up. So when I got the offer for the Pretty Little Liars reboot, that already felt so like serendipitous. I mean, it was the, you could always hear Pretty Little Liars coming from the TV in the living room. You know, my sister loved that show, and so that was already strange enough. And then to get Gossip Girl after that was just kind of like unfathomable. And her other show is The Office. That's her third favorite show. So now we're just waiting for me to hey. <clears throat> be on an Office reboot. Uh, so Emily, you and Whitney, do you bond on set about the Canadianness? Or oh, there you go. There you go. Um, I think that like I'm I'm definitely half Canadian. So like my dad was um like raised. He was born in France, but his his dad was like in the army and stuff. Um, or Air Force. So I didn't like actually live there, but I actually did as a kid actor. I did like six movies there, or seven movies there. So I had a lot of time there. But I I don't have like the like the hey like I don't have like that not much. Of it. But her and um Jordan really bond over that because they're like born and raised there, you know. So and Grace, I love your story of um late show, with late show PA. <laughs> yeah. Can you in a nutshell just tell the audience about that amazing journey? Um yeah. So I graduated acting school in the pandemic. Crazy. Don't do that. So I didn't have any of like the acting opportunities. I and so then I went back to the late show. I used to be an intern there and I was a PA and I booked they didn't know I had they didn't know I had agents or I did anything I just was like how do you say that so I didn't and so then I booked Gossip Girl and then I was like I still don't know how to tell them so I just I did season one of Gossip Girl and stayed I so I did both at the same time and then at the end when it was like okay like it was like getting November like we're about to start um getting ready to film the next season I on my last day I was like guys I'm leaving and they're like why and I was like I'm gonna be a series regular on HBO <laughs> they were like what? Like at that point, only the people who were my interns and like my direct, direct team knew. So, so many people were like, what does that even mean? Like, what are you saying? And I'm like, yeah, so I already filmed this TV show and I'm off. Bye. <laughs> love you a lot. But yeah, I, I, to my entire Lake Show family, I love you guys. I miss you. And I'm very excited to eventually go back as a guest. That would be cool. That'd be really sick. <laughs> That's gonna be so awesome. To I know the band already told me they were like, whatever song you want, you just text. Because I was, I also worked with them, so they were literally like, you text us what song you want, and we play it. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so awesome. Yeah, I love them. Evan, I I was on your Instagram earlier, and I had to laugh about um, some of the headlines. GQ business of being Evan Mock is booming. New York Times Evan Mock is having the best time. What is these are the best headlines I've ever seen. What is the secret to such good press? It's just exactly what it says. It's just having a good time and uh, and a great publicist. You and me, I guess, and a and a great publicist. Um, I don't know. I think, I mean, as well as like the acting thing, I'm kind of just been, you know, picking up new hobbies and they turn into career and I kind of get more obsessed with things as they develop. And um, I kind of just been trying to keep things fun and. Uh, make sure that you're having as much fun as possible at all times, which has gotten me in trouble at times, but it definitely keeps the room light and everyone um, on their toes. So it, it's fun being being like a kid from Hawaii that grew up on an island. I definitely did not think I was going to be doing any of the stuff that I'm doing now. So I'm kind of just, you know, taking a step back and kind of trying to enjoy the process and um, try to learn as much as I can from my peers and my mentors and uh, listen to the ones who've already been through it. And uh, I, I, I don't know, just keep, I guess, having fun. I'm not, I'm not really sure. <laughs> like the video? Then hit the button or better yet, drop us a comment. Then check out our latest videos here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button here for more celebrity interviews and entertainment news.